بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايتها النفس المطمئنه ارجعي الى ربك راضيه مرضيه حسين حسين King of Martyrs Hussain, Hussain has been slaughtered Hussain, Hussain Hussain, Hussain, for his people. Labbaik ya Hussain. Labbaik ya Hussain. Labbaik ya Hussain. We all grew up with love of Hussein. We all grew up with love of Hussein. We pray to live a life like Hussein. We pray to live a life like Hussein. Thanks for love of 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 Hussein. Let's read this together. Thanks for love of Hussein. 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 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu ala al-Hussein. وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليكم our dear friends around the world may Allah bless you and your family and your community السلام عليكم إليا زهرة how are you good alhamdulillah we're glad to have you back on the show Tonight is the night of the 9th of Muharram, a night known as the Night of Tasu'a. And uh, tonight's program is dedicated to Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam. Have you been to the shrine of Hazrat Abbas? Yes. MashaAllah. How many times have you had the privilege and the blessing to visit the shrine of Hazrat Abbas? Three times. Three times? MashaAllah, I pray that all the children, all of you who are watching, you get the blessing to visit the shrine of Hazrat Abbas. Now, Elia Zahra, can you tell us uh, one of the titles of Hazrat Abbas? Abal Faz. Abal Faz, Hazrat Abal Fazl al Abbas. Salam. And do you know of another title of Hazrat Abbas? Alamdar. Alamdar. And what's the meaning of the word Alamdar? Flag bearer. Flag bearer. He was the flag bearer of Imam Hussein, the flag bearer in Karbala. <laughs> Ya 
كم نرتوي عذب الإيمان ما كانت كربلاء إلا عنوان من كم نرتوي عذب الإيمان ليست تذكار ليست أذكار ليست إلا وعيا من ثار لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين يا مولانا لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين Children in Karbala didn't have water for three days. His friend Alaska was really dirty. Baby Sakina asked and called a box for water. Boss was brave and reached the river. I learned that Abbas was thirsty, but he remembered Ali Aska. Abbas did it. So after the tragic events of Karbala, the message of Karbala and message of Imam Hussein was spread by Hazrat Zainab Salamullah Alayha, Imam Sajjad Alayhi Salam, and the other Imams. And at the time of the Ghaybat of the Imam of our time, Hazrat Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif, our scholars and ulama are continuing to spread the message of Imam Hussein. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen today, we're honored to have a great scholar with us, Molana Salim Yusuf Ali. I'm sure you've watched some of, some of his videos and lectures. Salam alaikum, Molana. Alaikum salam wa barakatuh, Dr. Nu. Thank you so much for having me on the program. Thank you for coming. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine. And I just wanted to say my special salam to all of our wonderful friends who are joining us for the program uh, this evening. Um, I hope that you guys are benefiting from this program and we all appreciate the efforts of Dr. Nu and, and the team who's putting them, uh, putting the programs on. Thank you very much. Um, Mama, children often ask, and I have the same question, why the event of Karbala happened? What happened before that that led to this you know, event? And you know, maybe it starts from the time of the Prophet and then what happened to Imam Ali alayhi salam, and Sayyid Fatima and Imam Hassan. But we know that Imam Hussein was living in the city of Medina, in his hometown. But why did he leave his hometown? Why? His family was there, his friends were there. Why did he leave Medina? That's a really good question. And what we can say is it must have been something really important because nobody just leaves their hometown just like that. I mean, you might want to leave to go on a vacation, but then you come back. You don't just leave. But here we're told that they had to leave. They had to leave in a short amount of time and it wasn't easy. One of the daughters of Imam Hussein says that no family had ever been scared the way that we were at that time. Because at any time, you know, the enemy could have come and they could have killed them. Mm. So he had to leave. Now, why did he have to leave? Because sometimes you have to give up what you have. You have to give up what you love 
because there's something that is more important that you love even more. So people who love Allah, they know that there are sometimes they have to give up something that they have from this world in order to serve Allah the best way. Imam Hussein Alaihissalam knew that if he were to stay in Medina, then he would have to somehow, uh, you know, not be so like, uh, not not be so committed to Islam. He'd have to somehow like kind of compromise and say that, well, yeah, it's okay for Yazid to be the leader. It's okay for him to like change what Islam is about. It's okay for him to drink wine. Um, it's okay for him to be the leader, even though he doesn't, you know, have any right to be the leader. He couldn't do that. He had to make a stand. He had to tell people that, no, this is not true Islam. True Islam is the one which involves obeying Allah and where the whole society is led by somebody that Allah wants that person to be the leader. That's a very important lesson. So Imam Hussain didn't make any deals, any compromise, and he left his comfortable home maybe, or you know, uh, um, his family and his hometown. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Let's watch a clip and we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> So Imam was saying left the city of Medina, but why come to Mecca? Why not to some other city? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Mecca is the place where everyone wants to go to. And we know why. It's because that's where we go to to perform the Hajj. Imam Hussein salam knew that Hajj was right around the corner and a lot of people would be coming. And he wanted to make sure that whatever is going to happen to him, it doesn't just stay in one city. Everyone should find out about it. So that's why, well, that's one of the reasons why he said that let's go to Mecca. A lot of people there will come to come and they'll start asking questions and they'll be like, why did Imam Hussein leave Medina? And in that way, he'll be able to teach them of what's right and what's wrong. That what Yazid stands for is wrong. Even though he calls himself a Muslim, that's not the type of Islam that we can stand for. Wow, subhanAllah. So did Imam Hussein go to Mecca at the time of Hajj? He went to Mecca in the time that people were preparing to go for Hajj. And he was there when the Hajj actually was about to start, yes. So did he complete his Hajj? No, he did not complete his Hajj. Wow, why? There's obviously completing Hajj is something which is an uh, important thing. Sometimes it's wajib for somebody to go for Hajj and to complete it. But there are some times where even performing Hajj or completing Hajj, there's something which is more important than that. Now in this case, Imam Hussein Islam knew that the enemy had a plan. They were going to come and while he was performing tawaf, they were going to kill him. And Imam Hussein, the last thing he wanted was for his blood to be spilled near the Kaaba. That area is a special place. It's called Masjid al-Haram. Everyone who, who goes there is supposed to be safe. Now these people, they didn't care about that. Even in the safest place, they wanted to go and they wanted to murder him. But he didn't want to make the place, like he, he wanted to keep the respect for that place. So that's when he made the decision that he has to leave Mecca as well. So when did he leave Mecca? Imam Hussein salam was in Mecca for a while and people started to know about that. They knew that he was there, he had to leave Medina. Now it's very interesting. 
right when people were getting ready to start the actual official Hajj, that's when Imam Hussain left. So of course everyone would be asking, Imam Hussain was there, he was with us, and now he had to leave. Definitely something was going to go wrong. Hmm. Remember Imam Hussain was doing something not just for his time, he wanted to do something so that people would remember that something had happened many, many years later, just like we're doing right now, centuries later. SubhanAllah, that's very beautiful. You know, another lesson for us that all the actions of the Imam, the intention behind it was pure. The intention was Qurbata and Allah. And that's a very important lesson for us. We'll come back in a minute. said just before Hajj was about to start Imam Hussein and his family left the city of Mecca and where did they go and why did they go there did they have other options so Imam Hussein at this point he with his family and his companions he makes his way towards the city of Kufa the reason is that the people people from Kufa they knew who Imam Hussein Islam was because Imam Ali when he was the ruler, his government was run from Kufa. So they knew who the Ahlul Bayt were, they knew who Imam Hussein was. When they found out that he had to leave Medina and he didn't want to accept Yazid as a ruler and he was trying to preserve real Islam, they started to write him letter after letter after letter inviting him saying that please come, please be our ruler, we don't like the government of Yazid. We want you to be our ruler, we're going to support you. And so many letters came that Imam Hussein Alaihissalam had to respond to them. He first sent his cousin Muslim ibn Aqil there. Muslim at that time, everyone welcomed him and Muslim sent the message to him that, okay, now you come, they're ready for you. So of course we know later on things change in Kufa, but Imam Hussein at that point, he had to respond. When the Imam is somebody who loves people, he loves to help people. When they ask him for help, he can't say no. He has to go and help them. So, as Imam Hussein is traveling from Mecca towards Kufa, did he find out later on what happened to the people of Kufa? That they changed their mind that Hazrat Muslim was was martyred, or did Imam Hussein find out about that when he got to you know closer to Kufa? Imam Hussein Islam found out about what they had done to Muslim on the way to Kufa but he still had to do his responsibility. Oh, so even at that time, he didn't change his mind and like, you know, go somewhere else. But, but, but can you clarify that? Why? Imam Hussain alayhi salam, remember, he's doing what he's doing. He's not out to just have an easy life and just take the easy option. There are some people like that. They say that we're going to run away from anything that's dangerous because we have to save ourselves. Now, of course, we never want to go and do something dangerous just because it's dangerous. We're going to protect ourselves. But there's some times where you have to do something which is more important. And so here Imam Hussain Islam knew that, well, there's still some people in Kufa he has to, who are supporting him. Um, he needs to go, he needs to respond to them. And this is where maybe people will be there to support him. Wow. And then... Um... What happened at Karbala? Why was he stopped at Karbala? Why didn't he make it all the way to Kufa? Well, on the way to Kufa, uh, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, who was Yazid's like, governor that he had put in charge of Kufa at that time, he knew that Imam Hussein was coming. Mm -hmm. So he didn't want him to come to Kufa because he knew that if he were to actually get to Kufa, a lot of the people who were scared of Ubaidullah, they might change their mind and they might start to support Imam Hussein because they're the ones who wrote the letters in the first place. So Baydullah said that let's not let him even get to Kufa. So he sent a small army headed by Hur to go and uh, stop the army of Imam Hussein from actually reaching Kufa. 
And so when that army met Imam Hussein's army, um, Hur told him that I can't let you go to Kufa. Imam Hussein and some said that, okay, fine, will you let me go back to Medina or back to Mecca or anywhere else? He said that, you know, you, you can't go back to Kufa, you can't go back to Medina, but you can go in another direction. So then they ended up traveling together and eventually they ended up in Karbala. Oh. And I'm just interested to know, how did Imam treat Hur and his family? Like, you know, they were the enemies, they stopped him, they blocked him, you know, how was how was the interaction of the Imam with his enemies? So Imam Hussein Islam knew that these people uh, were stopping him from reaching Kufa. They, he knew that eventually they were going to be the people who fight against him and eventually kill him and his family. But one of the amazing things we see is that Imam Hussein Islam treated them with kindness and with compassion, even though they were his enemies. When he saw them, he saw that they were thirsty, so he gave them water from his own supply of water, which was limited. He even gave their horses water to drink, because he saw that they were thirsty and they were in the desert, even though he himself knew that he didn't have that much water for himself and for his family and his companions and his horses. And even the way he talked to them, it, was, it wasn't like you know somebody who's so angry and no it was very he was using logic he was trying to say that this is why i'm here i'm responding to the call of these people who asked me to help i'm doing my responsibility that islam has taught me i'm the grandson of the prophet mm. i have to do certain things why are you stopping me mm. so if it's something when you look at it you realize that we learn from imam hussein and islam that even with people who are your enemies you still have to have you still have to act in a certain way, in a way that they realize that Imam Hussein Islam, you know, was somebody who really was a person of truth and a person of Islam. SubhanAllah, you know, that's just that's an amazing lesson, you know. That, that's why we look at Imam Hussein and Ahlul Bayt as our role models, as our standards, so we can learn from them and we can try to be like them. We'll come back in a minute. much Mawlana you know that's that that gives us more information of why Imam Hussein ended up in Karbala and what happened before that now Mawlana um, Alhamdulillah the children at home uh, they've sent us so many videos of them reciting Noha reciting Ziyara or speaking to Imam Hussein but there is one that uh, work that is really really amazing and I uh, want to mention that uh, there is a young brother, his name is Hassan Ali Askari. He is in Houston. And he's been making videos on YouTube showing the historical um, aspect of the event of Karbala in the backyard. He made a very, very nice, like, you know, um, mock of, of the uh, river of Forat and the tents. And tonight we're going to watch like another uh, episode um, that's dedicated to um, 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 week eight. Um, why do you think this kind of work, you know, is important that like children are like, you know, getting engaged and spreading the message of Imam Hussein a.s. Well, I'm really happy that uh, children are getting involved and doing what they can. I wanted to send my special thanks to Hassan Ali as well for his efforts. May Allah reward him for that and may Allah accept them. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who are doing different things, whether you're dressing up in black, you're reciting nohas, you're writing poetry, you're reading and learning about the history of Imam Hussein. You're participating in gatherings, either online or in person, um, and you're crying for Imam Hussein. 
that's so wonderful. And I can say that like whatever it is that you're doing, you should realize that this is some of the most important things that you can do. In life, right, there's a lot of things that we could do. We could be playing video games. We could be like, let's say, just chatting with friends. We could be just playing outside. And of course, sometimes we need to, you know, have fun. We need to do different things. But especially during these times, um, when we're of times of when we're getting closer and closer to Ashura, we should be trying to spend more time with Imam Hussein, remembering him. And this is something that will help us in the rest of our lives and also in the hereafter as well. So whoever you are, whatever you're doing, inshallah, do it for the sake of Allah, uh, but try your best. And maybe you might think of your efforts as being small right now, but maybe in the eyes of Allah and the eyes of the Imam of the time, they're very big. And inshallah, as you grow older and you become more skilled, you can put even, you can try even harder and do even other things. And in that way, you can be part of spreading the true message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Inshallah. Thank you very much for joining our program. May Allah. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you for having me. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. And let's end with a prayer that Ya Allah protect all of our ulama, all of our scholars, and give them more tawfiq to spread the message of Imam Hussein and Karbala. Ilahi Amin. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hassan Askari. Because of coronavirus, we haven't been going to Majlis. So, we'd like to bring a little bit of Garbala into our own home. This is our display. Today is the eighth day of Muharram. By this time, the children in Imam Hussein's camp are crying for water. On the 8th of Muharram, Imam Hussein asked Hazrat Abbas to try and dig wells in several places. Unfortunately, one after another, they faced a sheet of solid rock at every place, shattering the hope of providing water to the thirsty children in Imam Hussein's camp. Then, Imam Hussein asked Hazrat Abbas to take some companions and try and fetch some water from the river. So Hazrat Abbas took 20 horsemen and went to the riverbank. When they got there, they were challenged by Amr bin Hajjaj and his battalion who were guarding the riverbank. One of the companions that went with Hazrat Abbas to get water was Nafi bin Hilal. Nafi bin Hilal was on Imam Hussein's side, but he was also the cousin of Amr bin Hajjaj. If you watched the episode from two days ago, you would know that Amr bin Hajjaj was one of the commanders that Umar bin Saad posted by the riverbank to guard it. So when Hazrat Abbas and his companions got to the riverbank and Amr bin Hajjaj heard his cousin's voice, he allowed him to go drink water from the river. When Nafi turned to Hajjaj and said, When the Holy Prophet's grandson and little children and ladies are not allowed to have any water, it's a shame on you to allow me to have water. Then Nafi turned to his companions and said, Charge forward to the river. And they collected as much water as they could in leather bags. Then Hajjaj and his battalion started to fight Hazrat Abbas and his companions, but they were not successful. Hazrat Abbas and his companions managed to bring a few leather bags of water back to the camp. But according to some scholars, when the children rushed to get water, some of it spilled on the ground, and the elder members of Imam Hussein's camp didn't get any water. When Umar bin Saad heard that the brave companions actually had the courage to come and fight a huge battalion and actually succeed in taking water back to the camp, he ordered the banks of the Euphrates to be even more barricaded and ordered not a single drop to reach Hussein's camp. So Umar ibn Asad put more and more and more soldiers to guard the riverbanks and tightened the circle around Imam Hussein's camp. 
When Imam heard this, he asked Umar ibn Sa'ad to come and speak with him. He asked him, Do you not fear God, the one who will account you for my blood? Are you unaware that I am the grandson of the Holy Prophet? Leave the Banu Umayya alone and keep away from harming me. That will be more pleasing to God. But Umar ibn Sa'ad refused and said he was scared his lands would be taken away. After this meeting, he commanded his men to surround Imam Hussein's camp from all sides. Ibn Ziyad kept on sending more and more and more troops. Like we mentioned in the previous episodes between the 4th and 8th of Muharram, Ibn Ziyad sent more additional troops as reinforcements. By the morning of the 8th of Muharram, over 140,000 armed men were assembled against Imam Hussein in Karbala. And whenever Ibn Ziyad's forces arrived in Karbala, there was happiness and beating of drums and blowing and trumpets. The enemy were getting happier. Imam even spoke to the members of the enemy's army and asked, do you not know that I am the grandson of the Holy Prophet? Do you not know that I am the son of Fatima? Do you not know that the martyr Hamza was my uncle? Do you not know that the martyr Jafar was my uncle? Do you not remember that the Prophet said he was leaving behind two things, the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt, and that they should not be separated? Do you not know that my brother Hassan and I are the masters of the youth of paradise? But the enemies did not listen. In fact, one enemy by the name of Qais ibn Ziyad said, First you accept Yazid as caliph, then we will listen to you. Imam replied, I will not declare Yazid as caliph. He is a tyrant and an oppressor. I will not submit to him. Dear brothers and sisters, the scene of Karbala is changing rapidly. It is very hot in Karbala, and the children aren't sleeping well. The cries of Al-Atash, Al-Atash, Al-Atash breaks the Imam's heart. What will the Imam do? He stays patient. For the sake of Allah, our Imam is bearing it all. More is to come, and our Imam's patience will be tested further. Ashura is getting closer and closer. I pray that you continue to have majlis and continue to cry for Imam Hussein. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and success to follow Imam Hussein and the Ahlul Bayt and hasten the reappearance by Imam al Mahdi. See you on the 9th of Muharram. یہ کل بھی زندہ باد تھا یہ اب بھی زندہ باد ہے زندہ باد تھا یہ اب بھی زندہ باد ہے الحمد للہ رب العالمین ٹوڈے ور بلس ٹو ہیو بردر مہتی فلاتی وت اس اگین ہی واز اے گیسٹ اینڈ ون آف دا پریویس ایپیسوڈ اینڈ ان شاء اللہ ہی ول بی وت اس ٹمارو نائٹ ایز ویل Um, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. I want to thank you for these really amazing programs you guys are putting together. My family, we love it and we enjoy watching it every night. May Allah bless you and everyone who is contributing to the cause of Imam Hussain on these nights. Inshallah. We're really thankful to Brother Mahdi. As you know, he's a professional reciter. That means these nights, tonight is actually the 8th of Muharram. It's Thursday, the 8th of Muharram, the night of Hazrat Abbas. And... Uh, Uh, I know that you have multiple majalis these nights, sometimes up to four or five, yet you made the time to come and join our program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The reason we wanted Brother Mahdi to join us tonight 
is to teach us how to recite Matam. We've been talking about, you know, it's good to recite Matam, but some of us may want to do it, but you don't know how to do it. So inshallah, he is first going to give us some information, some basic tips that we can all use to recite Matam. And after that, he is going to lead us in the recitation of Matam. And you and me and all of our friends at home will do it together. So I would say go ahead and get your Muharram project book and go to night nine, inshallah, after Brother Mahdi gives us some you know, uh, lessons on the recitation of Matam, we will be that reciting that Matam dedicated to Hazrat Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas alayhi salam. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Bismillah rahman rahim um, so first thing I always do is I try to prep myself, kind of like, you know, I would prep myself to pray. I would prep myself to do the recitation, inshallah. I understand that, you know, it's an opportunity that's been given to me by Allah. And the owner of the majalis of Imam Hussein are Imam Hussein's mother, Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra. So um, before I enter the majlis, I always try to be in wudu, do my wudu, make sure I have that cleanliness, my clothes. Everything about me, you know, has to present, uh, uh, inshallah, an Islamic form of recitation, especially. And uh, once I enter the majlis, I always uh, try to talk to Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra and ask her to clear my intention. Because sometimes I find myself maybe wanting to recite so that other people see me recite. Ah. And they say, wow, mashallah, you know. Or, you know, maybe my other friends recognize me that, wow, he's a reciter. But... I realize that every time I've gone through that uh, experience, it's um, definitely affected my recitation. And I realize that by doing tawassul or by connecting to the mother of Imam Hussein, she usually, alhamdulillah, is, is a quick way of alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, okay, that's a very important lesson. To have pure intentions, not to please other people, but to please Ahlul Bayt and Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. Now, before going to the majlis, you know, when it comes to picking, like, you know, the poem, what, what you know, recommendations you have for children, like, you know, before they actually get to the majlis? Um, so, especially when it comes to prepping, because it's very important that if you want to do a really good job, because we want to do a right for Imam al-Hussein, and this is the opportunity he's given us, I make sure that when I choose my poem, I, po I, use it, I choose it properly, I look at the lines, make sure it's a, it's a poem that this only speaks the truth about our imams. And then um, I try to connect with the words and try to understand what the noha is trying to say. Because if I have the connection with the noha or the, the lakmiya that I'm reciting, I will be able to get the people who are listening to me connected with it as well. Okay, so you try to understand the meaning of the poem and you connect to it and you are selective. You pick, you're picking about which poem to use you're not going to use anything it's something that is valid because you may get a poem and it may have information that is not correct yes. so you got to do your research very good yeah and you know our ulama our molanas they will can can be a source for us to make sure these poems are correct so i check with them as well before i come out and recite a poem alhamdulillah now you have access to 11 different poems in this year's muharram project book that you can use which has been already proven, which is great. And, it, and inshallah, we will utilize them. So now we enter the majlis, we have good intention, we made wuzu, we've practiced, and now you see the people in front of you and you panic. <laughs> now what? That's a very beautiful point. And I remember that I've always tried to remind myself that when I'm reciting, I'm reciting for Imam al-Hussein and Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. So they are watching me. Um, we just learned in the majlis that before anyone enters the majlis of Imam al-Hussein, there are angels present. Before anyone starts to shed a tear, um, the angels shed tears. And uh, you get into the zone of your noha and your connection with the noha. And you start to recite it. But I always, alhamdulillah, try to really just recite it so that I do my duty and you know serve, inshallah. And really regardless of what the response is around me. Because a lot of times, especially doing English, I remember, especially in the early years, I would not get any response. I, would, I could barely get people to hit with me, you know, mm -hmm. um, let alone recite with me. And I would ask my friends and they said, you know, maybe they're like, they didn't feel comfortable, they were shy, that they might not sound really mm -hmm. proper. But Alhamdulillah, um, um, so when I recite, I make sure that, you know, my stance is, is upright, exactly. Okay. Because like, well, Go ahead and do it with us, stand upright like this. 
So, very good. Okay. Because it's very important your breathing, your diaphragm, your lungs. You want to make sure always get good amount of rest because the, the better you're breathing, the more oxygen your body receives, the more you'll be able to better you'll be able to project okay. your voice. So it's important to rest. Very good very, before yeah. you recite. Very Absolutely. good. Absolutely. And also when we recite, we want to make sure that, let's say me and you are talking about, let's say, level two voice right now. Level okay. two is, you know, we can hear each other. But when we want to recite, we want to project our voice out. So we have to speak out on, let's say, level three voice. Not screaming in level four, but level three where, like, let's say if somebody's standing across the room, you want them to hear you're across the yard. Okay. And we start with the tone, inshallah. And so, the Brother Mahdi versus Brother Mahdi. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, Marshall, very good. And uh, when you start, you want to remember that when you are reciting, you are controlling and managing the way the poem or recitation of the Latimiya is going to go. And everyone will follow your direction. Okay. So a lot of times, a lot of reciters uh, I've seen, they also make sure to do the Latimiya, uh, to do the Matam themselves so that people could watch them. And, okay. And when you do the, the Latimiya yourself, you're able to adjust your beats to okay. where you're supposed to. So let's say, you know, I'm, if I'm trying to get someone to say a new, um, say, say, let's say a brand new Latimiya they have never heard, I have to make sure I've practiced it so much that I'm so certain about how it's supposed to be that I can, inshallah, convey that to... Oh, practice is very important. So, so far, let's go over this again. You pick a good poem, right? You, you try to practice. Very good. You try to connect and understand the meaning of the poem. When you, before you want to uh, recite, rest. When you enter, have good intentions and make tawassul and make wuzu, like you know, uh, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt to help you. And now you enter, stand straight, right? And you're ready to recite. But sometimes I've seen children try reciting really fast because they get nervous. Mm -hmm. Should they recite fast? Take your time. Take your time. Important. Very take, take your time. And I will remember one other thing, paying attention to our prayers, mm -hmm. praying on time. Because once you pray on time and you, you discipline yourself to pray on time, you, you then you discipline yourself to, to pay attention to your wudu, always be in wudu. Very good. And also you pay attention to practicing on a regular basis and making sure that you know you do a really fair job for the Alhamdulillah. For okay, so you start. And any other tips before we actually start uh, practice this together? So we talked about the beat. Make sure you convey that over. Um, I think we covered everything, right, brother? Okay, Noah? very good. And if you make a mistake, don't stop, right? Exactly. Just again, you're reciting for Imam Hussein, and you know how forgiving they are, and how loving they are. So. Just remember, just like your parents watch you, and no matter what happens, they love and support you. Same with them. Your imam is watching you, and inshallah, Imam Zaman is watching you. Inshallah, 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 they'll accept it. And keep going. Keep going. So if you make a mistake, no worries. I make mistakes. All we, the time. We make mistakes all the time. Even but, on recordings, we make mistakes. Yeah, so don't worry about it. Just continue. Very good. So now, are you ready? Inshallah. There is a, the Noha for tonight is titled Wawaila Wawaila. Now Wawaila is an Arabic word that uh, conveys sadness and grief. But what if you don't want to say Wawaila? You want to say something else? Can you do it? Absolutely. So as long, can, yes, absolutely. As long as it's appropriate, absolutely. You so can. we can change the poem. You should definitely. Okay. Change. So for example, the way we do it is a Wawaila three Wawaila. So I have to look for something else that is similar. Three. Very good. So maybe Ya Abbas. Ya Abbas. So instead of saying Wa Wayla, Wa Wayla, why don't we say Ya Abbas, Ya Abbas? Okay. Are you ready? Let's do it. Alhamdulillah. Let's do it together. So again, stand still. Okay. And inshallah, you have the poem in front of you. And we're going to recite together. Inshallah. Bismillah rahman rahim Ya Abbas, Ya Abbas. Ya Abbas, Ya Abbas, Ya Abbas, Ya Abbas, the flag bearer of Karobala. Ya Abbas, Ya Abbas, the flag bearer of Karobala. Ya Abbas, Ya Abbas, the champion of Nainawa. Ya Abbas, Ya Abbas, the champion of Nainawa. Ya Abbas. Abbas, ya Abbas, ya Abbas, ya Abbas, the brave martyr of 
القما يا رب ما شاء الله يا رب in battlefield like Murtaza يا رب يا رب he was born to أم البنين يا رب يا رب but his mother is فاطمة يا رب يا رب يا رب Ya Abbas He's the protector of Haram Ya Abbas Ya Abbas He's the protector of Haram Ya Abbas Ya Abbas He is the owner of Alam Ya Abbas Ya Abbas Ya Abbas Ya Abbas Ya Abbas Ya Abbas صلي على محمد وعلى اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا حبيب الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا سيد وسي السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة الصالع العالمين السلام عليك يا حسين مشتبى السلام عليك يا عبا عبد الله السلام على الحسين ولا علي ابن الحسين ولا أولاد الحسين ولا أصحاب الحسين السلام عليك يا علي بن موسى رضا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا صاحب الزمان ورحمة الله وبركاته Once upon a time there was a great companion and the beloved brother of Imam Hussein His name was Al-Abbas and his title was Abu Fadl translated to Father of Goodness. He was born on the 4th of Sha'ban, 26 AH. As soon as Imam Ali heard the good news, he rushed to take the newborn and recite Azan in his right ear and a comma in the left. So, the first voice he heard was of his father. His noble father, Imam Ali, named this great warrior Al-Abbas, which means the lion that other lions fear and run from. Al-Abbas looked like a strong mountain. In battlefields, he was fearless. His great personalities included the brave, patient, love and loyalty to his dear brother Imam Hussein, and finally, his strong faith in Islam. Abu Fadl al-Abbas contributed to Karbala by obeying Imam Hussein, being the flag barrier for Islam, and going out to get water for everybody in the tents. He went to go ask his brother for permission to go out to the battlefield. Imam Hussein did not let him. He said with a sad voice, You are my backbone. Imam Hussein felt as safe as long as his brother was with him. But Al-Abbas insisted on the permission and said, I can no longer stand it. I want to take avenge upon those hypocrites. Instead of letting his brother fight the malicious enemies, Imam Hussein asked Hazrat Abbas to try to get water for the children who were very thirsty. Hence Al-Abbas, looking towards the Umayyad army with words of criticism, he warned them against God's punishment. He directed his speech to their commander, Omar ibn Sa'd. This is al Hussein, son of the daughter of Allah's messenger. You have killed his companions and household. These now are his children in Haram. They are thirsty and I ask you to give them water. None from the Umayyad army could answer Al-Abbas except Shimmer, who said to him, Son of Abu Tarab, if the whole surface of this earth is water controlled by us, we will not give you a single drop of it before you accept to the leadership of Yazid. Hence Al-Abbas had to report the situation to his brother. Finally, Al-Abbas lost his life by going out to the battlefield to fetch water for the young children. He rode his horse, took a water skin with him, and rode towards the river Euphrates. The Umayyad troops ran away, and he was all alone on the banks of the river. His heart was as hot as fire because of thirst, but when he tried to drink the water, he remembered the thirst of his brother as well as his children. So he threw away the water from his hand. 
In the meantime, the enemies surrounded him from every side and tried to stop him from taking the water to his brother's camp. Al-Abbas spared no affairs in fighting against them. However, one of the filthy hypocrites of Kufa hid behind a palm tree and surprise attacked Al-Abbas, striking him from the back on his right hand and cut it. A few moments later, another man hidden behind a tree struck Al-Abbas with the sword on his left hand and cut it. Although he was bleeding, Al-Abbas held the water skin with his teeth and hurried trying to take the water to his brother's children. Meanwhile, a spear hit the water skin and caused the water to dribble onto the ground. Seeing this, Al-Abbas was struck with sadness and sorrow. He did not know what to do. A few moments later, another man attacked him with an iron post and struck him on the head. Al-Abbas fell to the ground and shouted, Peace be upon you, Abu Abdullah. As the Imam heard these words of goodbye, he hurried towards the river Al-Qani, where Al-Abbas fell. He pushed himself through the troops of the enemies and threw himself on the body of his brother. As the Imam went towards the tents, his daughter Sukaina received him with the question, Where is my uncle Al-Abbas? Here the Imam wept and told her about her uncle's martyrdom. The situation was more difficult for Zainab, who put her hand on her heart and shouted aloud, O oh, brother Al-Abbas, we have certainly lost everything as we lost you. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Sallallahu alayk ya Aba Abdullah. What a beautiful majlis recited to one of the best people who ever walked on this earth, Hazrat Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas, a symbol of loyalty, a symbol of love, a symbol of always, always being there for your Imam, no matter what. It's the night of Tasua. We only have two more episodes left. And uh, as a reminder, if... Uh, Anyone is interested to sponsor these uh, majalis of Ahlul Bayt, um, you can go to our website at kisakids.org and uh, there is a link there to make a donation. The link is also provided in the description section of our YouTube channel and the comment section of Facebook. Um, and as a reminder, all the projects in the Muharram project book can be downloaded free of charge as a PDF on our website. Inshallah, we have two more episodes left uh, from this series. One is tomorrow, which is the night of Ashura, a very, very important night. And then one is on the actual day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram al-Haram. Now it's time, Ilya Zahra, to go and listen to our friends at home speaking to the Imam and inshallah after that we will watch the very interesting clips the beautiful clips that are made by CAB TV with a salawat ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammadin wa ajjil farajahum Assalamu alaikum ya abul fadl ya abul fadl boss I really love you and I want to be like you you are my hero and you, the and the hero in Karbala and even I have my suit which is same like yours. You made a big sacrifice. Allah has given you the title of Babel Hawaii. He prays for me for me that I can go come and do your zarat. As-salamu alaykum ya abul fudl abbas wa anna ti anna bi finai alikum mi jameen salamu wa bakbakti anna nuha wa la jalla la adama ni ziraratikum Alaykum Through this medium I want to approach my hero Hazrat Abbas Alamdar Al-Islam the hero of Karbala 
you are a courageous warrior and flag bearer in karbala please train me to become one so as to join the army of my imam you preferred imam hussain al islam over yourself through total obedience and sacrifice yourself please help me to inculcate this trait and become worthy of drawing the attention of my imam O Babul Hawaij, I now cut your door to implore Allah for fulfilling these two wishes. Peace be upon you. Salawat. Assalamu alaikum. I want to speak to Hazrat Basu Leslam. You are so brave because you got water from baby Sakina. You are my superhero because you showed me how to help other people. You searched so far and wide, you went for brother's daughter, and you searched for her, you died. Where is my Abbas gone? 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 You hear the thirsty children, you hear... Oh my Hussein, oh my Hussein. One hand only, and you don't move the body. You stand nice and straight. And just go, oh my Jose, oh my Jose, oh my Jose. Together. Abbas, 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 Assalamu alaikum and welcome to a message from Karbala. My name is Hadi Al Hilli and my lecture will be about the importance of salah. Audhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa ahli baytika tayyibin al tahirin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There are so many things which are so important to learn from Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Ashura. One of these things is the importance of our daily prayers, the salah. Allah subhanahu wa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made these wajib compulsory for Muslims because there are many benefits in doing our salah. Perfecting the salah was what the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt used to encourage people to do. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said, Prayer is the pillar of the religion. If it is accepted by Allah, then all the other actions are accepted. Imam Hussain loved the salah and used to do it on time. During the night of Ashura, he and his family and companions spent the night in salah and reciting the Quran. They wanted to spend the final night of their lives remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was something beautiful. On the day of Ashura, Imam Hussain stopped the fighting and started to his to do his prayers at midday. The arrows, were, the arrows were being fired at him by Yazid's army since they did not stop to pray. But Imam Hussein was not worried and continued. Some of his companions were killed as they defended the Imam in his prayers. The actions of Imam Hussein showed he pay, paid attention to Salah even though he was fighting the army of Yazid. Imam wanted us to know that we should never miss our prayers. There are things to remember about Imam Hussein and prayer. Number one, we should pray on time. Number two, we should not miss our salah. And number three, we should pray correctly with the correct recitation. Sometimes shaitan comes to us and whispers that we should ignore salah or delay it. We should then look for Allah's help and do the opposite to what shaitan says. 
In Ziyara of Imam Hussein, we recite, I bear witness that you established prayer, prayer and gave charity. Imam Hussein sacrificed his life so that Islam reaches us today. When his son Imam Sajjad was taken as a prisoner with the women of Ahlul Bayt, someone asked him, how can you work out if Imam Hussein was successful? Imam Zain al abidin said, if you hear the adhan being recited, then you know the movement of my father is a success. Assalamu ala al Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein wa ala awlaad al Hussein wa ala ashab al Hussein. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Assalamu ala al Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein wa ala awlad al Hussein wa ala ashab al Hussein Assalamu alaikum everyone Inshallah for you today we have another very special craft from the Muharram booklet Today we are going to be learning about the spider Do you see this beautiful spider Let's see how many legs it has let's count together 1 2 3 four, five, six, seven, and eight. It has eight legs. Have you ever seen a spider's web before? Let's go on a field trip and see if I can find one outside my home. Come join me. Salam guys. Do you see what's behind me? Let's take a closer look. SubhanAllah guys, this is a spider's web. This is right near my house. I'm sure you can look around your house and find many of these spider webs nearby. But where there's a spider web, there's our friend the spider. And look and see how delicate the spider's web is. It's made with a special silk that comes out of the spider's body. And he uses it to trap his insects that he wants to eat. Now, if I took my finger right along this web and I touched it, do you see how quickly it comes apart? And if there was a big gust of wind, this home would be gone in a few seconds. But don't go breaking any spider webs, okay? These guys worked really hard to build them. Subhanallah, wasn't that amazing? Now, although that works for the spider, do you think you'd want a home made of a spider's web? Something that could break the minute a wind gushes through or your hand goes and touches it, your entire home would come apart. So while we love this beautiful spider and to see how it does its beautiful spinning, we don't want a home just like the spider, right? So we have to remember that our homes and our hearts have to be strong, like Hadrat Abbas and how he had such a strong heart and he built that heart to be strong with the love of Allah and the love of his brother, Hussein. So today, we're gonna think like the spider and we're gonna make a beautiful spider's web. Isn't that amazing? And just when there's a spider's web, you'll find your little spider. So today, I'm gonna to show you what you need, which is very simple. You just need the cutout from the Muharram booklet and you need a pair of scissors. Now, if you're younger, you're probably gonna need some help doing this project. But the first thing you wanna do is when you see dotted line, you wanna cut the dotted line. So let's cut this dotted line and there it goes. And now I have four equal sides, which makes a square. Now, do you see these lines? Those are our fold lines. So I'm gonna take my top and I'm gonna fold it. Let's press it down. While you're, while you're working, you can say, la bake ya Hussein. I like to say that when I'm working. So do you see this other line? Let's fold again. Okay, and fold it again. But look, I have another fold line, so let's fold it one more time. So we're gonna fold again. Okay, now I see more dotted lines. And do you remember I said dotted lines means cutting time? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut along those dotted lines. So cut, cut, cut. 
and then I have this. And now what I'm going to do is there's more dotted lines. Now this gets pretty tricky. So what you're going to do is if you are younger, you might want to have an adult. Otherwise, just go ahead and start cutting where you see the dotted line. Okay, I hope you had a trash can close by because there's a lot of small pieces that you want to make sure you throw away. Okay, bismillah, let's open up our spider's web. So just like the spider's web is so fragile, which means it could break easily, this can break easily too. So be careful when you open it. And when you do open it together, let's say, subhanAllah, Allah made the spider in such a perfect way. And so is his spider's web. I hope you enjoyed this craft. Inshallah, look out for the Muharram booklet. Go ahead and decorate your spider's web. And always remember Hadrat Abbas, whose heart and home is so strong in the love of Allah. Qadim was badly injured in the battlefield. I wanted to take him back to the hospital, but he stopped me. I asked him, Qadim, how are you doing? He held my hand and said, Great, because I can see my Imam sitting in front of me. The last thing Qazim said was, Assalamu alayka ya sahib as And then he was martyred. May Allah grant all of us the opportunity to see the Imam of our time. And may Allah help all of us to become the true followers of Muhammad and all the Muhammad. May Allah bless you, your family, and your community. Until tomorrow night, Assalamu Alaikum. Oh, uh -huh.